Hi everyone, my name is Brian. I'm here, I'm gonna show you how um, I put together a flag. Um, it's helped my students in the past, it helps me as well. Gives uh, the flag a little bit of longevity and it just makes sure that it's weighted correctly and able to spin. Um, I always approach this with there's many ways that you could take a flag. This is just the way that I like to prefer. So I hope you enjoy and let me know what you think of the video in the comments. So first thing, materials, get a measuring tape a Sharpie, preferably a silver one. You need two crutch tips. These are your regular Walmart. You can get stoppers for the bottom of bar stools if you can't find any in like guard land. You're gonna want two bolts. My personal preference, I like a three inch bolt and a two inch bolt. There are a lot of different variations. The biggest thing that you can recall is big goes on top, little goes on bottom. I was always told Dolly Parton, big on top, little on bottom. Make sure you have your silk, pick your favorite. And then I'm gonna use black and white tape. It really doesn't matter which color you use, but um, from there, you should have everything to put together the entire flag. So let's get started. Here's what I like to do. From your bare pole, I put a measuring tape the entire length, all six feet, and using your silver Sharpie, mark your cheaters. Now, if you do not know what a cheater is, cheater is just where we like to put hands on the pole. So we use the physics of it, toss from the top cheater, the bottom, the tab, all that stuff. But it is roughly every 12 inches and using the silver Sharpie, especially on this black pole, helps make sure that it's visible. You only need to go 12 inches and 24 inches from each side. You don't have to do the middle one. The middle one's just gonna exist where it exists when you get the flag on there. But then if you're doing backwards math, 12 and 24 on the left side gives you 60 and 48 here on the right side. And so just make a little sharpie mark. And now the beautiful thing is if you ever undo the flag again, they're there, you don't have to do it another time. So like I said at the very beginning, everyone does flags differently. This is just in the culmination of what my instructors taught me and what I've taught my students. I like to go around the cheaters six times, preferably, depending on what you need to do. Um, the color can change, but I like to make them as loud as possible so we can see them. One, two, let me count for a second. Three, four, five, six. Again, everyone does it differently. I like six, you can feel that. You close your eyes and feel that cheater, you know exactly where it's gonna be. A lot of people like to use scissors when they are taping. By all means, go for it. Two, three, four, I don't mind a little pull every now and then. One thing to note, if you do pull it, I would pick this up and just let it relax itself and then flush it on down and it shouldn't move on you anymore past that. I will say there might be instructors out there. If you have an instructor and you're watching this video and they pulled you into this video, they may have other instructions that they want you to work with. Please, by all means, do that. This is not the end all be all way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we have a nice good pull with the top and bottom cheater, both that will be inside the flag and that will be on the pole. I'm gonna set that aside for a second. Now I'm gonna go to my bolts. I personally hate clanky bolts. Inside of a pole, that is one of the most annoying sounds in the world. So, to put a buffer on it, I take a good black tape, because this is your cheaper tape, around the rim of the bolt three times. One, two, three. It just gives a nice, good, protective muffle that's already softer. Do that on the rim, and then I also go down to the very bottom point where that's gonna impact the inside of the pole. This one, I don't really count. Just make a nice good bulb down on the bottom and then test it. You'll hear it. It's gonna make sound, but it's a lot less clanky than before. Like so. All right, so we got our bottom one done. Excuse me, I have a bit of a sinus thing going on apparently. One, two, three. And then for the bigger bowl, I do start somewhere in the middle and then work my way down. All of this part of the bolt's not gonna come in contact with the pole, so you're fine to leave it alone, but make sure the bolt, the biggest part, is down on the bottom. All right, so now let's go ahead and attach them. Best thing you can do is go back to your Sharpie, and when you put your bottom bolt in, 
leg width, right next to it. Here's what I like to do. The bolt has a tendency because of centrifugal force to fly out. Never want that to happen. You don't want to hit your friend in the head, right? So take your black tape and make an X over the bolt. Again, I just kind of pull. It's not needing to be perfect because it's going to get covered up anyway. So I did a crisscross. I did a plus sign and then I did a multiplication sign over the top. And then I take one more little wrap about an inch down. Again, that'll get covered up when you put the stopper on. Excuse me. And that secures that bolt in place. Hit it a few times. You'll hear if it's gonna make any sound. If it does, go back, put some more tape on it. But you can do one of two things. Since this is the bottom, we know that nothing else is gonna go on here with the actual silk. So you can go ahead and take the stopper. If the stopper is a different color, I would do the same thing that I just did with the bolt and I would crisscross the top so it looks all the same. But since this one is black, I'm just gonna circle it. So, if I can get it flush, there we go. It's ever not working. I'm not gonna do it on my floor, but bang it into the ground, that will help. Start at the end of that crutch tip. I would circle once or twice, and then just let it migrate down. The tape is gonna collect, it just happens to do that on its own, but the more you can press with your hand, the heat from you to that tape, it'll flush it all out so it'll be nice and normal looking. Okay, so now we have our bottom crush tip. All right, so now let's go to our top crush tip. I personally like to do it in this manner. Again, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, so follow suit with whatever your instructor may ask you to do. But I'm gonna put the bolt in first. Crisscross, and then secure it. And now we've got our top crush tip. Double check the sound. Doing all right. All right, here is my method to my madness. Put the silk on first and foremost and double check and make sure that you've got the tip going down toward the tab. So put that side on first. Double check, we're good. And now I like to go ahead and put the crush tip on. Most silks, the way they come, they're wide enough in the sleeve if you needed to quickly take it off without undoing your entire pole. You could leave your crutch tip attached to the pole right now, and then this silk could come with a little finagle, can come right off. So it's a quick change, and you don't have to undo the entire pole. So take the stopper, do the same thing you do with the bottom one, start at the top, and then migrate your way down about an inch. It all gets covered up and then just smooth it out with your hand. Now, here is where I said label the bottom and I spoke incorrectly there. I meant label the top. So what I would do here is I would put a T. So in the event you take your flag off because of an emergency, you accidentally put your pole down and then you can't see which is the top, which is the bottom, or you can't feel, this will tell you it's the top. Just something to help you out. All right, now, a lot of different ways you can do this with the silk. A lot of people want to have it all the way up at the crutch tip. Some people want to have it just at the bottom. I like a little bit of both. So in most flags, you've got this little Velcro issue going on. I would say put half of it on the stopper, half of it off. The more you can hold it and pinch it around, making a circle, a cheerio with your hand, the better. Cover the flag to start, loop around. And I'm using black tape right here just because it'll blend in with the pole. Go down onto the silk until your tape is completely on the pole and then work your way all the way back up, getting all the color to disappear so it's just black. It's a little bit uh, two inches, if you will, from the top of the crutch tip till the black is done, till you're on the flag, but it does have a little bit of a collection here and it keeps the flag all the way up to the top of the pole. So last thing to do, double check your sleeve. Make sure it's nice and flush and not twisted. Sometimes you'll get to the tab, and if you don't hold it correctly, it'll start to twist on you, and we get a little collection. So just kind of wiggle it, make sure that the sleeve is good to go. Here's how I operate this. Take your right thumb, hold down, so you've got a nice good straight line from the top to the tab, and now you want to collect everything in your left hand, and now switch thumbs. That's going to give you a nice good clean line to cover with your tape. And so I start about an inch on the silk loop all the way around, replace your thumb because it will have a tendency to turn and twist on you there. 
The good thing is I haven't put any tape on the pole so I can move this if I need to. So do another double check, make sure it's nice and flush and straight. Collect everything, use your thumb to support. And now just circle on around. The number six is a resounding number with me. It's what one of my instructors told me. So I usually go around this six times, go down. And then if you just wanna make sure it's nice and secure, go back up again. A little more tape, it's my cat Addison, she's saying hello. A little more tape isn't the worst thing in the world here at the tab, it is the fulcrum, so it's the balance point. So you're not really adding anything crazy to the balance, okay? When you hold your index finger on the tab, the goal is for the silk to fall. That's where you know that you've got the right amount of weight. Um, even on a pole that has a two inch bolt and a two inch bolt, the weight of the flag side should still fall down. Physics helps it rotate. You never want a flag that's been um, put together to invert. It won't rotate in the air correctly, okay? And there you have it. You have a completed pole. You've got cheaters where you're gonna put your hand placement for the pole side. You also have cheaters that are invisible, but you can feel them. And with the silk real up close, I can see them as well. So it's helpful for anyone that needs to see that. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, and it is ready to go. From here, put your name on the bottom crutch tip. You always wanna replace it. Make sure that you know it's yours. And uh, if you ever need to redo anything, Take off what you put on and put it right back on again. So I hope that helps everyone that watched the video and uh, look forward to seeing you at my other videos for a rifle taping instruction tutorial and a saber one. Best of luck guys.